Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Got Got Betrayed and Join the White Dragon Empress Part 1. Before we start please go support Abraham Josu Salas Roa for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this essay is a male in this story. Chapter 1 is sad remember. It was night, the streets of Kuo were beginning to empty as people went home to their families and shop owners were also beginning to close their shops. Issei and the orc girls would have returned to the Haidu residence after a rather uncomfortable day for a certain brunette. The reason? Simple. The day before after the interview of the Grimory clan and the Bale clan, which were going to have a raiding game, Issei felt both embarrassed by the interview that when he went to take a bath, suddenly Ria's too she entered the same bathroom and tried to seduce Issei while asking him who she was to him, but Issei said an answer that made her sad and upset and therefore that caused her not to speak to him for the entire day before. The next morning, things were a little tense for Issei since the girls found out about what happened between Issei and Ria's in the bathroom and for some reason unknown to him, they called him insensitive and something like the villain of the movie. When the morning passed calmly in a way, it was already afternoon and they had gathered at the Orc to talk about the school festival, in addition to receiving a call from Lady Phoenix to check on Ravel and make Issei promise to take care of the girl. Little blonde who didn't know what was happening with them. When Ria's wanted to leave the club, Issei stopped her and asked her if something was wrong. But she only told him if he would protect her and the others, which Issei affirmed, and then Ria's asked him who she was to him, and Issei replied that she was his butchu which made Ria sad and angry, and she ran away. Of the club while the others complained to Issei for what he did, and he did not understand what he did wrong, even Kiba and Gaspar told him that it was his fault. Anyway, after that event the day passed normally for everyone, although Issei was left with many doubts and did not return to the club all day until classes ended and the return home was somewhat uncomfortable since the girls did not direct him to Issei neither the word nor the look. Which for some reason made him sad. But that said, Issei was in the living room of the Haidu residence, thinking about everything that had happened. Even during dinner time the girls did not speak to him and his parents asked him if something bad happened, to which he responded with a he doesn't know. Issei decided to stop thinking about that and went up the stairs of the mansion to go to his room. When he arrived and opened the door, he was surprised to see that everyone was in his room as if they were waiting for him, although they had an angry expression. Hey? Is something wrong, girls? Issei asked curiously, but he was surprised when he saw everyone looking at him. Issei, what are we to you? Asked Riaz, apparently angry. What do you mean by that, but you? Issei asked perplexed, not understanding what he meant by Riaz. Although he could notice how for a moment Ria's arms trembled slightly with her head lowered. How do you feel about us? Akeno suddenly intervened, clarifying what the king of him meant. How do I feel about you guys? Issei asked, asking the question in his mind as he tried to find an answer. Well you are my friends, my companions and I care about you. He responded with a smile, satisfied with his response, but his satisfaction did not last for long when he saw the girl's reaction. The girls were very upset when they heard how Issei gave his answer and it made them feel doubts in their hearts. Weren't they enough for him? Of course he wanted a harem, but he already had them. Although she made them angry and sad that he doesn't know what they feel. They began to remember all the times they tried to interact with Issei in a romantic and intimate way. They remember the look on his face when he looked at them and how scared he was. They were confused about why the man they all loved acted like this and when he asked them if something was wrong, they decided to confront him about his feelings towards him, but when they heard his response, they wished he had never done that. After hearing that he considered them friends and companions, they felt his heartache and his anger grow. At least, that's how they felt on the inside, but on the outside, they were crying out of grief. What is happening? Did I do something wrong? Issei asked in panic after seeing the girls crying heavily. The girls compassed themselves before looking back at Issei, who was now startled by the way they were looking at him. She had never seen them looking at him with such anger and it made him feel scared and confused. Issei began to think quickly as he tried to understand the situation. Issei was about to ask her what he had done wrong to fix it before he heard Ria's mutter something that made his heart break. I should never have reincarnated you, Ria's muttered silently in anger and frustration, thinking that no one was listening to her. E but you d did you really mean that? Issei asked regretfully, afraid to hear the Gremory heiress's response. Ria's frowned as she realized she had been hurt and chose not to respond, while the rest of her simply looked at her confused as to what Issei meant. Did I really mean that? Ria's thought confused, her mind was in confusion. She loved Issei very much, but sometimes his would really hurt her and the others, without even realizing it, every time he addressed her as but you and not by her name. He hurt her heart. They all looked at Ria's in confusion after hearing Issei's question. They were confused as to what Issei was talking about and why it sounded like he was in pain. Yes suddenly, they heard their king say that. 
but you please tell me this is a cruel joke Issei said desperately, hoping with every fiber of her being that Ria's really didn't mean what he said. I'm sorry, but sometimes I think I made the wrong decision to reincarnate you, Ria said sadly as tears fell on his cheeks again. They all gasped in surprise when they heard what Ria said. They thought that Ria's loved Issei more than anything else after everything they had been through, but hearing that he had doubts about her decision to reincarnate him left them very shocked. Hearing what Ria said, Issei's feeling was a mixture of sadness, anguish, remorse, and fury. Partner, are you okay? Drake asked after sensing the distress that his partner was experiencing. Issei didn't respond, which startled the Welsh dragon. He was sleeping when he suddenly woke up in response to Issei's intense feelings, and he was very confused about why his partner was feeling that way. I thought you loved me all of you, but I was wrong it's like last time Issei muttered silently, but they all heard him, frowning in response if you felt like that, then you should have let me die, Issei suddenly shouted in anger, shocking everyone. Issei Ria said sadly after witnessing the brunette's outburst of anger, the rest looking at Issei sadly. Issei didn't respond and looked at everyone before storming out of the room in anger Issei wait come back please Ria shouted desperately as he raised her hand and pointed it towards the door as if he was trying to reach it. What did he mean when he said like last time? Irina asked confused but got no answer as everyone was deep in thought, trying to digest what was happening at that moment, except for one person who frowned afterwards. To hear Irina's question. At first, she didn't realize what she meant, but after thinking about it, she remembered the one person who scarred him for life. Rainer Kaneko said, frowning after realizing what Issei meant. At the mention of the fallen angel, everyone who was present at the moment snapped out of her train of thought and frowned when they realized it. Rainer they muttered while thinking about the fallen angel as the pieces began to come together. The scared looks, the need to have many girls who love him, the lack of reciprocity in his feelings. It all made sense she still hadn't recovered from what she did to him. Um what do you mean? Who is Rainer? Irina asked curiously. What have we done Akeno said as Tara filled her and the rest of her dot, we have to find Issei Kun and apologize before it's too late she said urgently as she hoped it wasn't too late to find Issei. Ria's just stopped with a blank look what have I done? She thought to herself as she remembered what the boy she loved so much said to her. She couldn't remember why she said that she regretted reincarnating him since her mind was in complete chaos. Ria's are you okay? Akeno asked the king with concern after seeing the blank look her eyes held. Riaz continued to look forward as she ignored the queen's question of her, which made the latter worry. Riaz, let's get out of it, Akeno said as she shook the king off of her. Akeno. Riaz said after regaining her senses. Riaz, we have to go find Issei as soon as possible, Akeno explained to the king of her urgently. Let's go Riaz said still a little surprised before everyone went out to look for Issei. I can't believe that after everything we've been through this is how they treat me. Issei said to himself in disbelief. I thought they loved me especially Ria's, but apparently I was wrong Rainer was right, she said to herself sadly. On this day, Issei received a grim reminder. A reminder of her time with Rainer and the things she told him that ultimately scarred him for life. She walked aimlessly as she contemplated everything that was happening today, before finding herself in a place with abandoned houses. See how did I get here? Issei asked no one in particular as she looked around the place. Well, I guess it doesn't matter I have to assimilate everything Issei said to himself as he leaned against a wall and lowered himself to a sitting position and grabbed his head with his hands. I can't believe this and here I thought Issei said to herself before a face appeared in her mind. Would you die for me? Issei put his hand on his chest, trying to calm the exaggerated beating of his heart, which like him, was scared. Or hurt. No please no more Issei said to himself as he looked at his hands and was about to panic. Partner, you should calm down his dragon partner told him that he was trying to help his possessor, but it was useless Issei didn't even listen to him. I Issei said to himself, trembling, when. I do he heard what seemed to be a girl calling him that alarmed him a little and he stopped suddenly, starting to look around the place to find the source of the voice, and when he looked in a certain direction, he found it. And he tensed. A very beautiful girl with long silver hair and blue eyes appeared in front of Issei. She wore a black jacket with a green polo under it, as well as a black skirt and black shoes. Issei knew who she was, it was her fated rival, Valerie Lucifer, and she watched him carefully. The Valerie Issei said trembling slightly and then. Who's the Welsh dragon's voice echoed through the room as a bright light erupted before his red gauntlet appeared on his left arm. Valerie did not even flinch at the summoning of the boosted gear. Issei wasted no time and got into combat stance prepared for the inevitable battle, but he was surprised when he didn't arrive. Then aren't you going to attack me? Issei asked in confusion, to which the girl nodded. I didn't come here to fight you, Issei Valerie said with a tender tone to avoid provoking the boy. Then why did you come here, huh? Issei spat in anger. I'm just passing through, I was looking for the right moment to talk to you without attracting attention, Valerie said calmly. And what would it be? Issei asked impatiently, he had enough of this. 
I found out that you and your companions would have a raiding game against Sereard Bale, so I wanted to tell you that I will be watching it and I will not allow the cow's brigade to interrupt it with an attack said Valery. Is the just? Asked Issei, a little surprised that she is willing to face the terrorists as long as they don't interrupt a game. Um, I think it's just on a whim Valerie said, crossing his arms and looking away, trying to appear indifferent. Issei, upon hearing what Valerie said, only nodded as he lowered his guard and the glove disappeared, and then, unknowingly, made a sad and broken face, Valerie's mention of him fighting alongside his companions against Sererg, and his group made him made him feel doubtful, the painful reminder and what the girls told him took away all his spirits. Valerie for his part noticed Issei's empty expression and frowned at that. What was wrong with him? She barely noticed that when she arrived at the place, she noticed that Issei acted as if he was trying to stay calm, and how he was muttering things that she didn't understand, she knew that it wasn't her business to get into her privacy, but. Seeing Issei like that somehow, for some reason, it made his heart tighten, and without further ado, he decided to speak. Is something wrong, Issei? Valerie asked him. B that's none of your business Issei replied indifferently trying to hide her broken expression. I know it's not my place to get involved in your private affairs, but I'm surprised to see someone like you like that said Valerie. In what way? Issei asked indifferently. As if you had had a horrible reminder, or that something had happened that made you like this Valerie responded, who knew very well that expression of a horrible reminder, something similar to what she suffered a few years ago. Issei for her part was surprised to see that Valerie read her expression and others, as if it were a book. How obvious was it? But before he said anything, Valerie spoke again. I know you have your reasons to distrust me, Issei, but we have even fought together on one occasion, and you know that I am not looking for the same thing as the other members of Cow's Brigade said Valerie. Hearing her words, Issei was surprised again, and he had to agree with her both Valerie and his group, they are not like the rest of the Cow's Brigade, they only seek their freedom and fulfill what they want, practically. Dot dot they are an independent group that acts on their own and do not follow the orders of the Cow's Brigade. However, Valerie sighed when he thought that he would have no answer and spoke again it's okay if you don't want to tell me what's going on, after all, it's your business, that's not my concern, Valerie slowly walked forward. I turned around, ready to leave, but. I say somewhat broken voice made Valerie stop her step and turn to see a say who had his head down. I feel betrayed his words from her, made Valerie widen her eyes slightly. That. Issei laughs dryly and says. Sometimes I think if I really was just a flashy toy for them a source of power, and nothing more someone to show off in front of others, but never be honest. What do you mean? Valerie asked with a hint of concern when he noticed the broken tone in her voice. Be really I was just a flashy tool for them? Issei asked himself. There are times when I think I made a wrong decision by reincarnating you. Ria's words were heard in her mind, the crimson-haired girl's painful confession that shattered her heart. I think it was really just the flashy Sekar Yuteyase said sadly, before anger began to grow inside her as she remembered everything she did for them. He was broken, the feeling of betrayal and sadness clouding his heart, along with the feelings of rage and hatred he didn't hate girls, he hated himself for opening himself up to them and letting them penetrate the walls he put up after what happened with Rainer. He thought that with them it would be different, that they would be able to heal the hole in his heart that the vicious angel had left. Fallen, but they just expanded it much to his dismay. Valerie, for his part, upon hearing his broken words, had to analyze them carefully and in detail, did he feel used? That they only wanted him for his power. Dot, dot, dot. As he analyzed all that, he came to a certain conclusion did those grimmeries use him for his benefit? For a moment he thought it seemed crazy if that were the case, but if so. Was this all an act? All those times they sneaked into my bed and tried to seduce me was it so that I would remain loyal to them, so that they could take advantage of my powers, until they considered them useless? Issei asked himself with anguish and on the verge of crying when he realized he realized that all the happy times he had with the girls were just a facade. Issei Valerie said with her hand on his chest that, for some reason, it hurt to see Issei like this. I even if I return, I fear that nothing will change, I doubt I will have the confidence to speak to them normally again, or even see their faces Issei said, letting a couple of tears fall. Seeing a say like that, Valerie felt that emotion overcame him, and although he tried to suppress it, he couldn't help but shed a tear, he didn't understand why he felt that way, but he didn't want to see a say, that broken Valerie sensed that if a say comes back, maybe things really won't change. If it's true that they were just using him for pleasure, then returning would possibly destroy a say mentally over time. Valerie started thinking about how to help him, and then, an idea came to his mind that was risky and would possibly cause a lot of problems for both the Alliance and maybe the Cow's Brigade would take advantage of it if they found out, but. Dot dot there were no other options that was the only option for Issei not to be mentally destroyed in the worst possible way. Issei I call him Valerie, and her brown man looked at her with serious eyes, which made her heart tighten a little. Dot tell me one thing, do you want to go back to them? 
I say didn't know what to say and lowered his head with a gloomy expression. I don't know, I don't want to feel like that, I feel like if I go back, maybe I won't be the same again. I say Valerie called him again, and the brunette stared at her. I don't know if you want, but Valerie moved his lips nervously, but he decided to continue. Do you want to join me and my team? I say upon hearing those words opened her eyes in shock, she couldn't believe it. You join. Takes a step back, eh? You? You're crazy. And there is no way I will said Issei taking another step back. Even if your team does not follow the orders of the cow's brigade, you are still considered enemies I couldn't. I know what I propose to you is crazy, but Valerie responded are you okay with coming back and nothing changing. And I Issei lowered his head again with her expression broken upon hearing those words. And I do not. I know that if you do this, there will be no turning back and this could create a problem with the alliance, but still who knows what will happen if you go back. Are you okay with that? Hearing those words, Issei lowers his head and becomes thoughtful, he knew that depending on what he decides, anything could happen if he comes back, maybe nothing will change, and they will only really continue to use him for their benefit as he thinks they will. S. If he accepts Valerie's proposal, he will become everyone's enemy even if he doesn't fight against them, he would just be running away. But thinking about it more deeply, he felt as if Valerie gave him the chance to start over, because if not, why did he bother to listen to him? He even thought that she would respond with sarcasm, but he didn't, she apparently understood him, and she is trying to help him. There was still a lot she didn't know about Valerie, and this confirms everything. Issei, with her trembling, decides to give her answer after spending half a minute thinking about it. Yes. After hearing Issei's response that he agreed, Valerie was surprised, but then, for some reason, she smiled when she saw that he agreed. Very good, Issei said Valerie and then remembered something important. Oh, right, first of all it's necessary to get rid of your evil pieces, or they'll track you. Issei widened his eyes a little in horror upon hearing that be, but I'm going to die he said in panic as he remembered the consequences of expelling the evil pieces from him. Don't worry, you're not going to die Valerie reassured Issei before he began to explain how exactly he would get rid of the pieces of it. I'm going to use a spell to forcibly remove the pieces from your body, although it will be painful. Valerie explained to Issei with dismay. And expel them with a spell are you crazy Issei asked with terror. Don't worry, you'll be fine, but there's something you'll have to do if you want to survive this. Valerie said in a serious voice. What would it be? Issei asked after swallowing, he was nervous about the sudden change in behavior. You will have to ask the Welsh dragon, Drake. May I turn your body into a dragon, so you will be saved from certain death, and I will heal you, Valerie said without expression. That I become a dragon. Issei repeated Valerie's words, hoping he hadn't heard wrong. Something that was confirmed when she nodded to his question. See, I guess I have no choice, Issei relented after realizing that he really had no choice. E, did you hear, D. Drake? Of course, partner. I'll take care of it. The dragon's voice was heard through Issei's hand where there was a green glow on the back of it. Valerie approached Issei until they were both face to face, while a magic circle appeared in the girl's hand that she placed on Issei's chest, and the circle entered him. This is going to be painful Issei, so prepare yourself Valerie warned Issei, who frowned in response. He wasted no time and Valerie closed his palm, making Issei feel pain inside him and scream in agony at the immense amount of pain he was feeling. Valerie tried to do this as quickly as he could so that Issei wouldn't suffer for too long. I activate the circle inside Issei that releases a white light and the magic circle leaves Issei with eight pawn pieces in it, pieces that fall to the ground within seconds. Upon seeing the evil pieces, Valerie undid the magic circle so that Issei then collapsed to the ground spitting out some blood. I'll start working on the transformation, partner Drake's voice was heard from the gauntlet as he began to work on turning Issei's body into a dragon. Valerie stood there watching with pity as Issei was left unconscious on the ground after the evil pieces were ejected from him, he felt sorry for the pain he had to experience mentally and physically. But upon witnessing it, for some reason, he had the determination to want to help him no matter what. Valerie approached the unconscious Issei and knelt near her head, then caressed her beautiful brown hair, according to her. It's time for you to start again when Valerie said that, a magic circle appeared beneath her and Issei, and they both disappeared from the place through said circle, leaving only the eight pawn pieces in that place. Issei Kun, where are you? Please come back Irina shouted as she and the rest of the orc searched for Issei. They've already been searching all over Kuo, and so far there was nothing that could tell them where she went. They even notified Kiba and Gaspar of what happened, and they decided to go help with the search during their search, Riaz did not say a single word, as she seemed to be deep in thought. How is it possible? We've been searching for hours, and we haven't found a single clue about where she is, Zenovia said in frustration. I don't know Zenovia Chan, but we have to keep searching, Akeno said with determination as well, refusing to give up the search for the brunette. They continued looking around until they reached a place where there were abandoned houses that was on the outskirts of the city. Do you feel that? 
Akeno asked as they approached the place, feeling a strange and unusual aura coming from one of the houses. Strange Kaneko said with her stoic face as he looked at the place before starting to walk, and the rest followed her. As they approached the place of abandoned houses, the mysterious aura they felt began to grow stronger, but something about it alarmed the demons. This aura was not the usual aura you would perceive in a place like this, it was something else, something strangely familiar. As they passed by some abandoned houses they came across a pile of ruins, but in the middle of those ruins, they saw something that made their heart sink as terror, panic and fear filled their souls. On the floor of the ruins, they saw eight pieces of crimson pawn that belonged to none other than Isarius, who was still deep in thought about her when they arrived at the ruins, was startled the moment she he saw the evil pieces of her. Guilt and anguish began to fill the switch princess as she moved forward, and she collected the evil pieces. Isarius muttered as tears began to fall from her eyes before she burst into tears. After seeing her king burst into tears, the rest of the girls and Gasper collapsed as well, except Kiba who just watched the scene with wide eyes, still refusing to believe what he was seeing. I can't believe Issei Senpai is dead, Gasper said between sobs while he tried to dry his tears. The rest of the girls only cried harder after hearing what Gasper said. No I don't think Gasper Kun is dead, because otherwise, we would have seen his body here Kiba intervened, making everyone freeze as confusion and bewilderment filled them. So you say that Issei Kun is not dead? Irina asked bewildered, trying to hold on to the hope that Kiba provided her. It's possible, Irina San Kiba said with a small smile, believing that his friend was not dead. After hearing what Kiba and Irina said, the rest of the girls managed to calm down. Hugh, but how is it possible? Expelling the evil pieces from the body means certain death Akeno refuted Kiba's assumption. She, like everyone else, wanted to believe that Issei was alive, but as much as she hated to admit it, she knew the chances were very slim. You may be right, Akeno Senpai. But if he really died, then we would have found his body here, so something doesn't make sense here Kiba said. All feelings were currently one of confusion. They didn't know if they should feel hope that he might be alive or grief that he might die. They were completely confused as to why his body wasn't there, because, as Akeno said, expelling the evil pieces means instant and certain death. One thing they all agreed on was that something didn't make sense here, and after thinking it through, going through every situation that could happen here in their minds, they all narrowed it down to the only two situations that made sense. Either Issei miraculously survived the ejection, or an unknown source was involved and stole his body. Everyone, let's go back home, I'll contact my brother tomorrow so he can help us Ria said, exhausted from everything that happened today. The rest simply nodded before everyone returned to the house. Erg what happened? Issei wondered groggily as he woke up. Recovered from his dream, he looked around the room he was in, but panicked as he realized that he didn't know this room, he continued to look around the room in search of anything that could help him understand exactly what was happening. It happened until his eyes landed on a familiar person who was sitting in a chair near his bed and seemed to be asleep. He saw a girl with long straight silver hair, a very curvy body, and a bust that could rival a Keno's. She had a choker around her neck and was wearing a blue shirt with another button shirt on top that seemed to be straining to contain her bust, along with a red skirt that reached her knees. Wow, this girl is beautiful, Issei thought as he looked at the sleeping beauty before a thought came back to his mind. Now that I think about it, she really does look familiar, Issei thought confused, struggling to remember where he had seen this girl before, but it suddenly occurred to him. This girl was none other than his rival, Valerie. Realizing the girl's identity, Issei began to panic because her eyes were wide open. His mind was working overtime as he tried to think of where exactly she was and why Valerie was sitting next to his bed before remembering the events that took place recently, according to him. As soon as he remembered everything that happened, he remembered how broken he felt, how his heart was clouded with sadness and betrayal, as well as rage and self-loathing. He frowned as he remembered what happened last night with the girls. Sometimes, I think I made a wrong decision by reincarnating you. He repeated the words that his beloved king told him, the same words that broke him and made him feel so sad, he remembered how they all confronted him and complained to him. Partner, are you okay? Dreg asked as he woke up from his dream after feeling his partner's emotions. Dreg. I don't know. Issei said to his partner sadly trying to hide his feelings from the dragon. I know what you've been through Issei, I can feel how you feel Dreg told his partner that he was shocked in return. He realized that he couldn't hide anything from Dreg, so, instead of trying, he gave in and told the dragon everything that was on his mind. I feel betrayed I feel like the girls took what was left of my heart after Rainer, and instead of repairing it they broke it more Issei began to say anguished, as he described his feelings to the dragon who just stayed silent, listening. I trusted them I thought they would be the ones who could heal my heart and help me overcome my fears after Rainer, but in the end, they just made it worse. I don't think I can handle this anymore, Dreg I don't want to feel like this again. I don't want to feel totally broken and full of sadness I don't think I can open up to any girl for a long time. 
Issei said in a depression, after everything that had happened with Rainer and the girls. I understand, partner who knows. Maybe the girl who will finally cure you is right under your nose. Drake asked in an attempt to cheer up his companion, but the latter simply shrugged. Maybe, but I don't think so, Drake. Until you find that girl, I'll try to help you heal, partner Drake told his partner determinedly, reminding her that he still had her on his side to help him. Like Valerie, the Welsh dragon couldn't stand to see how broken his mate was. He felt like a completely different person from him, he wasn't the usually cheerful pervert who was interested in nothing but tits. Instead, he was now a shell of his past self that was clouded with nothing but sadness, betrayal, and self-loathing, and this made Drake very uncomfortable. Issei was deep in thought when he finished talking to Drake. He was thinking about his course of action now that he is no longer a demon, and, instead, he is part of a terrorist organization that the three factions want to exterminate. I do. Are you awake? After shaking his thoughts, Issei looked for the source of the voice and saw Valerie standing and looking at him with a small smile on his face that he hid as soon as he saw Issei looking at her. Valerie? Yes, yes, I'm awake Issei responded with an empty voice that did not go unnoticed by Valerie who frowned in return. How do you feel? Valerie asked with a small smile on his face that disappeared as quickly as it appeared. Well Issei said exasperated, making Valerie frown in response. Are you sure? Valerie asked, not letting him go despite his attitude. As if you really care Issei refuted angrily. What the hell happened to you, Issei? I'm just trying to help you Valerie said with frustration. Since when do you want to help me? You always brag about how you're going to destroy me and how I'm a weakling Issei refuted, making Valerie frown in return. I do it from now on Valerie said expressionlessly, leaving no room for Issei to hesitate. Issei was very surprised by what Valerie said, he never expected that his rival would care for him, because until now she only claimed that she would destroy him and become the true white dragon empress. So seeing how she suddenly cared for him surprised him a lot, but it also left him confused as to why exactly he started worrying now. Why now? Issei asked in a neutral tone. Because I saw how broken you were and I can't stand to see my rival fierce and full of determination that I came to respectful respect, Valerie spat angrily when he almost said something else that he knew, because he wanted to say it. Issei for his part was impressed by Valerie's statement. He didn't think his rival realized how he felt on his own since the night they met at the site of abandoned ruined houses. His new attitude and new caring made him feel better, but he still had doubts about how long it would last and if he was telling the truth or if he was burying it under his pretty facade. He couldn't help but notice the mistake he made during his statement and had his thoughts about what he meant, but decided not to ask her what she meant for fear that she would get angry with him. Thank you Issei muttered quietly so that no one would hear him, but thanks to his enhanced senses, Valerie heard exactly what he said, making him frown. What did you say? Valerie asked, wanting him to repeat what he said louder. I said, thank you Issei muttered loudly enough so it was audible without the need to enhance senses. Hearing him say that again, Valerie replaced his frown with a small sincere smile. For some reason, he was happy that Issei had recognized his change of heart and he also wanted to help him be the same as before or stop thinking about how he felt. And strangely for Valerie, she wanted to be there for him forever. Welcome Haidu. I will do everything I can to help you Valerie said, still with his small smile. Thanks again Valerie, I appreciate it Issei said, returning a big smile that made the silver-haired girl's heart skip a beat. The I have to go now, Issei P but if you need anything, just let me know Valerie said before turning around and leaving the room, leaving Issei with a lot to think about. Are you sure it was Valerie, Drag? Issei asked her partner in uncertainty after Valerie left the room shortly. Indeed, mate, although I must say it's very nice to see his sudden change of heart, Drag said with delight. Maybe but I'm still not going to trust her completely yet, not after what happened to me with Ria's and the others Issei replied. She couldn't allow her heart and her trust to be broken again, that would destroy him completely, and he knew it, so he had to be more careful about who he trusted. I understand partner, but I don't think Valerie has bad intentions. I felt that she sounded very sincere when she spoke Drake intervened, telling his partner what he felt. Issei did not respond and instead decided to give Valerie the opportunity to gain his trust. He would never tell Drake, but he found that Valerie was a very attractive woman, and her determination to become the best was something that motivated him as he slowly and unknowingly began to develop feelings for Valerie, but after what happened with the girls and Rainer, he wasn't sure that she, of all people, would reciprocate those feelings, and he was afraid to reveal them, at least not yet. Issei, we have to talk Drake spoke to his partner, alarming him a little. About? Issei asked cautiously, she knew that every time Drake said they needed to talk, it was never about anything good. After your evil pieces were expelled from your body, I transformed you into a dragon as you requested, but you need to know the ramifications of that Drake said to his partner, who for his part remained expressionless as he remained silent, making Drake continue talking anyway, 
you should know that since you are now a full-fledged dragon, you will adopt some draconic traits, such as hardened skin and enhanced senses, mostly smell and sight, but you will also be very vulnerable to dragon slayer's weapons and attacks. Wow, that's a lot to take in, Issei said with a bit of surprise upon hearing the consequences of his transformation, is there anything else I should know? He asked, making sure there was nothing Drake forgot to tell him. Ah, yes, actually there. You will get some of my affinities and characteristics, but I'm not sure which one, so we'll have to wait and see Drake added much to Issei's dismay. Oh I see. Well, I hope it's at least your good traits Issei said with a bit of hope that bothered his partner. What do you mean what are you waiting for? All my traits are good Drake asked, offended by his companion's statement, while he tried to refute it by praising himself. It doesn't matter Issei said a little nervously, he didn't want to meet the angry Drake again. The dragon just grumbled something that Issei couldn't hear except for some words like perverted. Chapter 2 New Life and New Team A few hours have passed since Issei finished talking to Drake about the consequences of his transformation. At first, Issei was very alarmed by the effects, but as he thought about it, he realized that it was a small price to pay and that there are actually more pros than cons, such as regaining his enhanced senses but without light sensitivity. Of the day and hardened skin along with increased strength. But while he tried to adapt to his new life as a full-fledged dragon, he also had to adapt to another new life life as a member of a team that belongs to a terrorist organization that is hated by the three factions. Never in his life did he imagine aligning himself with them, but he did not regret his choice, he saw how badly his so-called friends treated him and thought that nothing could be worse than that. Knock knock. Suddenly a knock was heard on the door, making Issei jump a little. Issei didn't say anything because the person on the other side opened the door after receiving no response. I do, I see that you're fine. Valerie said as she entered the room, already changed into her usual outfit and in her hands she had a small talk with a cup of tea. Valerie? S yes Issei said nervously as he looked at Valerie cautiously. Take this, it will help you Valerie said putting the tea on the nightstand next to Issei's bed. Issei, a little nervous, took the tea and took a sip, sighing with relief, gee thank you Valerie, Issei nervously thanked, listen, hi do, I know we've been enemies before, but now we're on the same side, so you can stop being nervous around me. Valerie sighed seeing that Issei was nervous around him. I'm sorry, but I could take the time to completely trust you or anyone in that matter. Issei admitted finishing his tea and trying to relax slightly, making Valerie a little happy. Very well, I don't know what you've been through, but from what I saw it was quite important. Valerie said that in a tone of pity directed at the brunette. I don't want to talk about it. Issei said as he averted his gaze downwards, dismissing the topic before he went any further than that. I understand replied Valerie as he struggled to come up with something to talk about. Why are you here? Issei asked suspiciously. What do you mean, hi do? I came to see how you were. Valerie responded, surprised by the sudden question. But isn't that all correct? Issei refuted, making Valerie sigh in defeat. I wanted you to know that you will be presented to my team tomorrow. Valerie responded. Issei, for his part, was beginning to be filled with fear after hearing what Valerie said. He still wasn't ready to meet his new team, he needed more time, but he really had no choice, since he knew he wasn't in a position to ask that. Are you okay, hi do? Valerie asked when he noticed that Issei was beginning to shake slightly. That? Oh yeah, I'm fine. Issei said, trying to hide how he felt. Well then, I'm going to leave now, so if you need anything, let me know. Valerie said, shrugging off the brunette's strange behavior. Okay. Issei responded as Valerie began to head towards the door, what am I going to do, Drake? I don't think he's ready for that yet. Issei asked Drake shortly after Valerie left. I don't know partner, but you don't really have a choice, try to do your best and pretend to be friendly until you really become friends with them, Drake suggested to his partner. That might work, thanks Drake. Issei said gratefully to his partner. Don't worry partner. I'm going back to take a nap now, so I'll talk to you later, Drake said tiredly before falling into his deep sleep again. Seriously what do you do besides sleep all day? Issei said in frustration, but the only response he received was the dragon snoring dot, nothing will be the same after tomorrow, Issei thought sadly shortly after his conversation with Drake, when he realized that starting tomorrow, he will begin his new life. He thought about what will happen once the three factions find out about his alignment with Valerie's team and what they are going to do. Although he thought he wanted nothing to do with girls, he still had people he cared for from the three factions, such as Michael, Serzichas, and Azazel, along with Sona and her peerage, as well as Ravel and Roswis, who did nothing wrong to him. To say when he thought about it. Although the last two were not aware of his situation. He was a little sad that he had lost a good number of his friends due to his new alignment, but he didn't regret his choice, because the more he thought about it, the more it made sense to him than what he thought and what Valerie told him. That night it was true. 
he was nothing more than a flashy toy to them, a source of power that was at his disposal whenever they saw fit, and he didn't know if he could still trust them or not after what happened. He dreaded the moment when he would possibly have to face them all, and he hoped it wouldn't be soon or that it wouldn't happen. When he began to think about how much his thoughts changed the girls, anguish and pain began to fill him. He thought of Irina, Zenovia and Asia who had a close and unique bond with him. Irina was his childhood friend, and Zenovia was like a lost lamb who grew up in the church knowing nothing until he met Issei who changed his perspective on everything. Asia she was his first friend, the one he saved from his first girlfriend, and the reason he awakened his boosted gear. Then he began to think about Rias, the girl who captured his fragile heart along with Akeno. But thinking about them didn't give him any happiness. Instead, it filled him with a familiar feeling of anger and betrayal, as he tried to relax by diverting his thoughts to something else, like wondering how everyone is going to react once they find out that their flashy red dragon emperor is now the enemy of he. He thought about everything that could happen for hours until he found himself surrendering to sleep. Issei woke up angry the next morning, thanks to Valerie repeatedly knocking on his door. Hi do you wake up Valerie shouted as he continued knocking on his door, increasing the intensity of his knocking each time he didn't respond. He was quickly losing patience and was about to throw the door off its hinges when he suddenly heard the brunette yelling in exasperation. What the hell, Valerie? I'm trying to sleep leave me alone. Issei shouted, like hell, I will, you must prepare for your presentation before my team. Said Valerie as a matter of fact, but now it's too early responded Issei with frustration, it's already noon, sleepyhead. Valerie said playfully when suddenly, he heard a noise coming from inside the room, making her open the door in panic. Once he opened the door, she was met with a sight that almost made her roll on the floor in laughter she saw Issei on the floor with her blanket covering him as she struggled to get it off him. Cute Valerie muttered silently as he watched the scene unfold, but he got scared when he saw that Issei stopped moving after she muttered. Hi do, are you okay? He asked nervously, swallowing when she thought he might have hurt her. Yeah this stupid blanket won't start, though. Can you help me instead of just staring at me? Issei asked irritably. Unknown to Valerie, he heard her thanks to his enhanced senses, but chose to do nothing but blush at the comment he was grateful to Valerie, but he wasn't ready to let her know that yet, not until he recovered from what he had done. It happened to him. Valerie didn't respond, and instead, he simply went forward and took the blanket off the brunette, who in return thanked him. After that incident, Valerie stayed in the room while Issei began to get ready until she began to change her clothes, which made Valerie blush and run out of the room, leaving a confused Issei behind. When she finished getting ready, she came out and saw Valerie leaning against the wall right next to her room. You took long enough. Valerie said playfully as he stood up from her position on the wall and began to walk away from her, motioning for Issei to follow her. As they walked towards her destination, Issei tried to calm himself down from the simple anxiety she was feeling. Issei dreaded this moment ever since her talk with Valerie. Partner, you have to calm down, Drake said to her partner worried about her after sensing her distress. Issei didn't respond, but after hearing what his partner said, he began to take deep breaths while slowing down his pace. By the time she calmed down, Valerie turned to look at him for a moment. Are you okay, hi do? Valerie asked Issei when she noticed the sweat on the brunette's forehead, yes. Issei said weakly before resuming his walk again, seeing that he stayed a little behind Valerie. During the walk to the main room, neither of them dared to say a word as Valerie looked at Issei from time to time to see if she was okay. He knew how scared the boy was, although he thought about it for a moment. How would her classmates react to seeing her arrive with Issei? You just have to hope that everything goes well and that you explain well later. Meanwhile, in the main room of Valerie's team base, there were the latter's team members waiting for Valerie and someone who was supposed to join her team. They had just returned from their mission and wanted nothing more than to return to their rooms to sleep, but that plan was shot down the moment they ran into Valerie, who told them about their new addition and asked them to wait for her to find out. Brought to the main hall later. The entire team was exasperated by this decision, but they decided to comply anyway, so they spent the last hour in the main room doing nothing. Once Valerie arrives I'm going to teach her a lesson for making me wait, Naya. Kuroka said playfully with a devilish smile, thinking of all the possible teasing she would give to Valerie. Please Kuroka-sama, I'm sure he has a good reason why he's late. Lefei said in her tender voice as she smiled at the Nekashu. Lefei was a very happy, enthusiastic and calm girl. She is also very polite, as she addressed everyone, friend or foe, with the honorific Sama. Nai I will see about Lefei, but I can't promise you that I'll be able to contain myself. Kuroka said while laughing. Kuroka was an easy-minded playful and simple person who always really enjoyed annoying people. She is a very vulgar woman who uses her incredible beauty and seriousness as a weapon to mock her. Lefei was about to protest when the doors to the main room opened and Valerie and his new teammate entered the room. The entire team focused on Valerie since they missed her a lot during her mission, but afterward her eyes fell on who would be her new partner from now on. 
Whereupon seeing him, for a moment they were left breathless in surprise as they looked at the newcomer with their eyes wide open in a state of pure shock. They had in front of them the Red Dragon Emperor, who is the rival of his companion Valerie. The first to recover from the shock were Bikku and Arthur who for a moment thought that Issei infiltrated and were tempted to take out their weapons, but seeing how Valerie seemed normal, as if she was not surprised to have the boy by her side, he made them realize that he was the supposed new partner. How was that possible? On the other hand, Kuroka and LaFay still did not come out of their confusion, for a moment they believed that what they saw was perhaps a bad joke, but it was not like that, it was real, they had the Red Dragon Emperor in front of them, they also wondered, how was that possible, but. For a moment, they both managed to see the expression that the boy had, he seemed to have a normal face, but they swore that his eyes were dull, along with an almost noticeable expression of pain. The first to come out of his confusion and decide to break the silence in the place was Arthur, who adjusted his glasses and decided to speak. Valerie you do know that you have the Red Dragon Emperor by your side, right? Asked Arthur normally with his usual serious face. Obviously Arthur. I know this will surprise you, but our new partner from now on is Haidu Issei, who you know as the Red Dragon Emperor. Valerie responded with a calm smile. Hey, hey, hey the Red Dragon Emperor is now on our team, huh? How interesting, seriously. Bikku said with her classic mischievous and relaxed laugh. How did this happen, Valerie? Arthur asked while Issei just looked down with his hair covering his eyes. We'll talk about that later, it's a complicated topic. Valerie responded, raising his hand as a sign for them to stop asking questions. He knows that talking to them about Issei's situation is not an option if he is present, he doesn't want him to remember how broken he was. And his condition gets worse than it already is. Issei on his side continued to look down, now he himself wanted to get out of there and go to his room to calm down. Just when he wanted to talk he saw that someone approached him at a slow pace until she was in front of him, it was Lefei who still looked surprised until she smiled happily. You're Lefei right? Issei asked, remembering quickly, he barely remembered the member of Valerie's team that he met not long ago. Yes, it's a pleasure to see you again Amhem, um, Issei Sama said Lefei with a smile on her face, and without knowing why, she hugged him so tightly, making everyone look at him with perplexity at the girl's strange behavior. Issei was very surprised when Lefei suddenly hugged him, but he was apparently a little happy at the gesture, which made Issei feel something he had never felt in some time. He felt happiness. She seemed like someone trustworthy who wouldn't hurt him like Rainer, Ria's and the girls back then. She was too pure to do that. Although her aura, the same seductive aura that drew the boy towards her, had a sense of purity, one that not even Asia could rival, which made the brunette quite surprised, but no less happy. Dot. Issei then caressed Lefei's head who still did not separate from the hug, even she blushed because of what the boy was doing, but she still did not let go of him yet, and Issei gave a small smile, making everyone in the room, especially Valerie, start would surprise. Valerie was still confused, and even more so when he saw Issei put on a small smile, and even for a moment the shine in his eyes returned. She was happy to see him smile, although for a moment she became jealous when she saw the closeness of those two. It was no surprise that Lefei was a fan of the show from which many know Issei as the Opai Dragon. But I really didn't expect her to react like that. Unaya, don't leave me out Naya. The one who said that was Kuroka who stood next to the brunette and hugged one of his arms, disconcerting the boy that she did not see or feel when he moved. Me, how long, Sekiru Teichin, did you miss me? Kuroka asked in a joking tone, but the reaction was the complete opposite of what she expected. Issei suddenly lost the small glow she regained in her eyes, and again she had a small expression of pain, as well as sadness. Because when she was happy for a moment, her mind and heart were different cases, since her heart reminded her how broken she was, while her mind reminded her of the why and how making the brunette release her inner happiness while she returned to her depression. Everyone could notice Issei's reaction, where Arthur and Bikku were wondering what was wrong with him, Valerie was worried that his mental state had worsened, while Kuroka and Lafay noticed even more of Issei's expression as they were closer to him, and that's what I miss and worry about. Issei-sama, is he okay? Lafay asked with concern when seeing the brunette in that depressed state. Hey? S yes he I'm fine Issei responded with a fake smile that everyone noticed. Are you sure Naya? Kuroka also asked when she saw him like that, normally he would act shy because of what she did. Yes I already said that I'm fine why the question? Issei answered and asked now with a sad tone of voice, as if she was repressing what she really felt, and that caught everyone's attention. It's just you don't seem to be well. What happened, Issei-sama? Lefei asked, making Issei tense at the question he didn't want to answer. I, I don't want to talk about it, Issei said before separating from both girls and addressing Valerie can I go now? I want to be alone. Issei said weakly as he looked at Valerie who looked at him with a look of pity and understandable when he saw the sadness in Issei's eyes. Of course Issei said Valerie, which made Issei start walking towards the door immediately, not bothering to say goodbye to Valerie. When the doors to the main room closed with a thud, before the stunned gaze of the others. 
Issei Valerie said sadly, knowing that he is not well for now, is Issei Sama okay? Lefei, who was unaware of Issei's mental state and emotions, asked with concern as his eyes began to shine, indicating that tears were threatening to come out of his eyes at any moment. Moment, she is far from well Valerie said sadly, making everyone except Biku and Arthur remain silent during the meeting, what do you mean? What happened to him? Lefei asked as the tears she was holding back began to show. I don't know exactly what happened, but when I went to see him to tell him that I wouldn't allow the terrorists to interrupt the game he would have with his teammates, I saw that he looked so broken he wasn't the essay that I knew and fought for, he was a shell of himself, and when I proposed joining us because it seemed like he didn't want to go back to his people, he just accepted it immediately, while agreeing with everything I said, instead of refuting it like he usually did. Hiroka and Lefei didn't say anything as they were bewildered to hear about Issei's extremely unusual behavior. They both grimaced as they theorized about what could have made the happy, kind, carefree, perverted brunette behave like a shell of himself. They both remembered the interactions they had with Issei, such as at the meeting of the young demons, where the Nekashu witnessed Issei's determination and kindness towards her friends, as she did everything she could to protect Kaneko. Or the time after what happened in Kyoto, where the blonde magician met the brunette for the first time and knew that he was a good person like no other. They both pondered that for a moment with her dead face, before it was replaced by a hardened face. We don't know what happened to Issei Sama, and we can't bear to see him like this, so we will do everything we can to try to cure him. Lefei said expressing the conviction she reached and Kuroka only nodded in affirmation, which made Valerie have a sincere smile on the face. Very well, then the three of us should do everything we can to return Issei to how he was before. Said Valerie as she and the girls raised their hands in the air, showing their acceptance of healing the broken brunette. Arriving at his room, Issei went straight to his bed to relax while he remembered today's event. Are you awake, Drag? Issei asked hoping that his partner was awake. All this time, Drag was the only thing he could rely on to stabilize himself, and he couldn't be more grateful for the dragon. Yes, partner, what's going on? Do you think the same thing will happen with my new team? Issei asked vaguely, but Drag understood it too well. I don't know partner, but the least you can do is give them a chance to prove themselves before discarding them Drag said, expressing his opinion on the matter. You're right, but still I can't help but feel that everyone I'm going to trust will end up doing the same as Ria's and Rainer. Issei confesses sadly. I know, but still not all people are like them, Drag said with venom towards the end. It wasn't often for the dragon to get angry about something, but after witnessing the rise and fall of the one he considered his companion by none other than those he trusted the most, he felt sorry for him, as his hatred towards the title of Grimmery intensified. Dot. I guess Issei responded emptily, partly agreeing with the dragon, while the doubt still remained within him. Give them a chance, partner, I'm sure they won't regret it don't forget that I'm here for you whenever you need me Drag said, encouraging his partner to give his new team a new chance, while reminding you of your presence in case you need support. Thank you Drag. Issei said with gratitude to the dragon. Don't worry partner, I suggest you go to sleep, you had a difficult day today Drag suggested to his partner that he feel how exhausted he was mentally and physically. Good idea, good night Drag. Issei said tiredly after yawning. Good night, partner Drag responded as he began to feel sleepy before falling into his sleep. Serzich's Lucifer was sitting at his desk and sorting through paperwork related to the affairs of the underworld and the three factions, as he always would since becoming Mao. His wife, Grafia, was standing next to her with her arms crossed in front of him as she waited silently for her husband to ask for help. Serzich's was about to sign the last three papers when a magic circle suddenly appeared next to his ear. The unexpected call surprised him. Yes. Serzichas asked as he waited for the person on the other side of the magic circle to start speaking, but he never expected to hear her sister talking to him while she sounded like she was crying badly. Oh Ani-sama, I'm sorry to bother you, but there is something I need to tell you as soon as possible, Serzichas managed to understand his sister between her sobs, his power of destruction began to explode as he felt anger and worry before Grafia calmed him down and told him. He warned that if he continued to unleash his powers like that he would destroy the room. Angry that his precious little sister had been hurt by something or someone while she was worried about what was urgent, she said that she had to talk to him about what judging from experience wouldn't be something she was looking forward too much to. Riatan is fine, please calm down. I will send Grafia to bring you and your peerage here as soon as possible. Serzichas tried to reassure his sister, who seemed to be working as she heard Ria start to sob less than before. Oh okay on Isama. Gee thank you he he said before hanging up the call, leaving Serzichas and Grafia very perplexed and worried. Honey, what do you think could have happened to make Ria's Sama break down like that? Grafia asked worriedly as she frowned, worried for her sister-in-law, whom she had grown to love and care for deeply since she had married him. Her brother. The relationship between Grafia and Ria's wasn't always as good as it is now. 
When Grafia and Serzich's first married, Rias was wary of the silver-haired woman's intentions and her true feelings towards her brother, as she knew their history as former enemies and the fact that her brother was very popular among girls. Of the underworld due to her title as Mao, but as time passed, Grafia did everything she could to show the Redeed that over time she could be trusted and that she was not going to disappoint her brother eventually, Grafia and Rias became very close, even to the point where they confided in each other about personal problems, such as relationship problems. I don't know, but from the way Rias sounded so then it's certainly not something we should expect. Serzich has said as he matched his wife's frown as he thought about what could possibly have made her precious little sister will behave like this. He swore that if he finds out who or what did this to her, she won't be long in this world once she's done dealing with him. Grafia can you go to the human world where Rias and his peerage are and bring them here? Serzich has asked her wife, who nodded her head before forming a silver magic circle that would take her to where Rias and the nobles were the rest. When Grafia arrived where Rias and his peerage were, she was surprised to see that not only Rias was broken, but it was the entire peerage. She looked around her for those present before raising an eyebrow in curiosity when she didn't see a certain brunette. Is everyone okay? Please tell me what happened. Grafia asked the sobbing girls, but to her dismay, the girls didn't seem to hear her question as her sobbing voices filled the room. Udo Kun can you tell me what happened? Grafia asked as she turned towards Kiba who was leaning against the wall with a gloomy expression on his face as he was absorbed in his thoughts. Issei Kun Kiba answered, making Grafia frown as she realized that the brunette was the source of the chaos, but he frowned as he thought about what could have happened to Issei that would make them act like this. You're injured. He was kidnapped. Or worse, was he murdered? They were the thoughts running through the silver-haired maid's head as she tried to come to her own conclusion as to what happened to the brunette after seeing that she wouldn't get a proper explanation from anyone in the room. She eventually shrugged and decided that she should just accompany them to her husband's office, where she expected them to explain everything that happened. Rias Sama and everyone else, I came to accompany you to Serzich's Sama's office, so if you could come closer so I can teleport us all to his office. Grafia asked everyone, which they all did before Grafia teleported them away. He returned to Serzich's office where he was impatiently awaiting his return. Serzich's paced back and forth in his office while waiting for his wife to bring Rias and her peerage to his office, when suddenly, a bright light burst into his room, signaling the return of Grafia with the addition of her sister and her nobility. Rhea Tan are you okay? You really worried me. Serzich's asked frantically as he watched his little sister appear in his office. He frowned as he took a closer look at Rias and the peerage of him, watching as Rias sobbed while Kiba stood there with a frown on his face. What's wrong, Rhea Tan? What caused you and your peerage to act like this? Serzich's asked as his concern for his sister increased as he saw what his peerage was like, surely this was no small thing if everyone in the peerage seemed to be affected by that. Rias just looked at her brother as he tried to calm down enough to tell her what happened. I say is dead we found his evil pieces in a ruined area in Kuo, after he ran away because of an argument we had. Rias let go of him, making Serzich's and Grafia freeze in horror as they heard Rias say that the brunette they came to take care of has died. Dot. How did this happen? Serzich's asked as he got over his initial shock thanks to him being a Mayu, he was already used to moments like this, where he was told that someone he knew died, but that didn't mean he was any less sad about the death of his little figurative character. While we were in the club room, we received a call from Lady Phoenix-sama, and she made Issei-kun promise to protect her daughter, after that, but she was going to leave the club, but Issei-kun asked her if something was wrong with her. Dot Kiba said when he saw that his king was not in a position to explain what happened. But you asked him about his feelings towards her, and he responded in a way that made her angry. After that, Issei Kun didn't return to the club until school ended. From what they told me, when they returned home, all the girls also confronted him about his feelings towards them, to which he responded in a way that they didn't like, making them lash out at him, which confused him since he didn't see that he did something wrong. He tried to find out exactly what he did, but at that moment no one answered him because they were all upset with him, until he heard Butchu mutter something that we couldn't understand, until he repeated his words out loud. What exactly did he say to Issei Kun? Serzich's asked curiously as he shifted his gaze from the blonde to his sister, who seemed to calm down a bit since she first appeared in her office. I said I wish I hadn't reincarnated as my servant Ria said, causing Serzich's and Grafia to widen their eyes, as they looked at Ria's in disbelief after hearing what she said. He why did you say that Ria Tan? I thought you loved him very much. Serzich's asked in amazement, still not believing that his sister could say something like that to the man she loved. And I was angry when I saw that Issei didn't see my feelings and didn't call me by my name, I started to think that Issei didn't care anger and frustration filled me, while my mind reminded me of my greatest fears about me and Issei's relationship. Ria said before beginning to sob uncontrollably once again, considering she was unable to speak until she compassed herself again. Everyone was surprised to hear how Ria spoke. 
She was never heard being so honest and direct, not even her brother and Grafia who were wide-eyed like the rest of her. Serzich's sama can I say something? Kiba interrupted before anyone could respond, making everyone look at the blonde knight curiously. Sure, Kiba Kun, what is it? I think Issei Kun might be alive. Kiba said with a bit of hope in his voice, hoping that whatever he told Serzich's was true. Serzich's and Grafia were shocked when they heard what Kiba said, they knew that if a reincarnated devil expelled his evil pieces, it would mean certain death, but when they heard what Kiba said, they began to feel a little bit of hope, since they knew that the blonde was intelligent. So I wouldn't jump to a ridiculous conclusion like that without having a good reason. Kiba Kun, expelling the evil pieces means certain death, as you may already know, only my friend Ajuka knows how to expel them without the user dying, but I'm intrigued as to why you think Issei Kun is still alive, so please continue and explain it. Serzich said with an emotionless expression, not allowing himself to show the hope he felt. When we found Issei Kun's evil pieces, we didn't find his body, which I found strange, since a forced ejection would mean he would die just a few seconds after it was over. Kiba explained, making Serzich's look perplexed as he began to think about what Kiba said before he continued speaking. I think someone else was with Issei Kun when his pieces were expelled. Maybe he survived and was kidnapped. Kiba asked with a grim face as he thought about the possibility of his best friend being taken and tortured. Serzich's with the addition of Grafia and everyone else frowned upon hearing what the blonde knight said as they too began to imagine the brunette being kidnapped and tortured. I must say that you may be right Kiba Kun, but we should keep our hopes to a minimum. I will contact the other leaders later to tell them about it and ask them to help us search for Issei. Serzich said with a small smile on his face as he finally let the small hope he felt creep out and show itself to everyone. Those who imitated his smile while his hope also faded, several hours later, Serzich sat in his office with his head on his desk, after finishing talking to the other faction leaders, about what happened to Issei, and the possibility of him being alive. After Riaz and the rest told her everything they knew or thought about the brunette's disappearance, Grafia served them tea before beginning to speak in an attempt to lift the gloomy atmosphere that remained in the room. After an hour, Riaz and the rest decided to leave when they saw the amount of paperwork on Serzich's desk. After they left, Grafia reminded Serzich's that he still had work to do, as she brought him another stack of papers to organize, making the Ritit sigh. When he finished a few hours later, he wanted nothing more than to end the day, but to his surprise, he remembered that he still had a long conversation with the three faction leaders ahead of him regarding Issei, so he asked Grafia if I could give him a coffee, while he called the three leaders. In Serzich's opinion, the talk was quite good considering the news he was about to convey, he knew that telling the other factions about the chestnut would cause a lot of emotions to arise in them, since he was aware that they liked the chestnut. Especially Azazel who seemed to have a lot in common with Issei. After a heated discussion about their opinions on the matter, they decided that what Kiba said had a chance of being true, so they decided to visit Serzich's in a few days, so they could start searching for Issei. Of course, they wanted to start searching immediately, but considering that the threat of the cow's brigade remained above all the leaders, they knew that they had to do this right and not rush, so they decided to take precautions before leaving, while Serzich's sorts out. The technical things, like possible places and people that could be related to Issei's kidnapping. You should say it's a day dear. Grafia said as she realized how exhausted her husband was, feeling sorry for how much he had to handle on his own today, and what had to come now that Issei had lost Dot. Serzich's only nodded before standing up and heading to his room with his shoulders slumped as Grafia followed close behind. A few days later, Michael and Azazel sat in Serzich's office in the underworld as they discussed the cow's brigade and what they should do about it, as well as the situation in the three factions, before switching to the topic they had initially come for, Issei. One of his decisions regarding Issei was to form a search party that would be conducted with people from each faction who specialize in searching. Another decision regarding the Cow's Brigade and Issei was to deploy people to guard the places that the Cow's Brigade could target to intercept them and ask them if they had anything to do with Issei's disappearance and prevent them from gaining more power. They decided that the search party would be composed of Riaz and his peerage due to his relationship with the brunette. The Keno was chosen by Azazel to serve as the Fallen Angel's representative on the search party. Irina was also chosen by Michael to act as the angel's representative on the search party. As for the people who had to defend the three points of interest of the factions, as well as intercept the members of the cow's brigade, they formed several teams. Once they were done, they called each team together and told them what their role was and where they would be deployed, which was responded to enthusiastically before each headed to their respective location. Afterwards, they summoned Riaz and said that they would be in charge of searching for Issei, which made everyone very determined and happy, before they all ran off to find the missing brunette, not wanting to spend a second. When they were done, they all went to Serzich's house, where the latter showed them the rooms where they would stay while they searched for Issei. 
Afterwards, they decided to have something to eat and drink before going to sleep in preparation for tomorrow, which will mark the beginning of the search for Issei. Chapter 3 Healing a Broken Heart I should never have reincarnated you as my servant said an angry Ria's in a dark space to an Issei who stepped back trembling, and then. I wish you hadn't been my childhood friend said an annoyed Arena, turning her back on Issei and leaving. I wish I had never asked you for help to find the church said an indifferent Asia. Would you die for me? After hearing that last sentence that he hates hearing so much, Issei opened his eyes suddenly and hurriedly lifts his upper body while he gasps from exhaustion. Issei put a hand to his face and sees that he was sweating, but not only that, he also felt something in his eyes and saw that they were tears did he cry while he was sleeping. Without a doubt it was the most obvious of all. Not again Issei said to himself as he sees his hand shaking. Lately it was no longer such a surprise for Issei to wake up elated and almost crying after every horrible dream, every so often currently it has been two weeks since he left his old group and joined Team Valerie. During all that time, Valerie was doing everything possible to help Issei with his problems, along with Kuroka and Lafay, which had little result until today also during that time, Issei was having certain socializations with the new companions of his. Furthermore, to relieve stress, Issei trained on his own sometimes so as, according to him, not to lose his current condition, even with everything that had happened, that did not stop him from wanting to get stronger, although he had little encouragement for it. Practically, he gave no encouragement to almost anything. And it was as Valerie had guessed, the current Issei is just a broken shell trying to look like the previous one, which seems impossible. And even more so with the dreams that always tormented him, at first it was just Rainer making fun of him and reminding him of his failures, but as the nights passed, that changed. All the other girls he cared about before started showing up too. Those of Rhea's telling him things that the real her would never say to him, or at least that's what she thinks, things that show his anger or disgust. Akenos that were similar to Rhea's. Kaneko's didn't affect her as much since, according to Issei, Kaneko would never love or see Issei as anything more than a hopeless pervert. Those of Asia, the three of them were very important to him, Issei changed his point of view, and each one had a special place for Issei in his own way, which in the end was collapsed after what happened that night. Issei sighs and shakes his head, I should stop thinking about that it only makes me feel worse. Partner this is Drake who had already woken up I know that it is not so easy for you to fall asleep or wake up without getting overly excited or without looking like you didn't sleep at all, even from where I am, there are times when I can see your dreams, and now Drake said in a thick tone, it makes me want to just burn everyone. Thank you for worrying, Drake is safe felt happy with his dragon partner, who is always there to cheer him up, I think we should start with a little warm up to lower the stress Issei said standing up from his bed. Dot dot. It is a good idea. In passing and you learn the fire of the dragons. Well Issei agreed with what his partner said and then went to clean up in the bathroom and get ready. In the training room, it was approximately 6.30 am and Valerie was in the training room doing his own training routine. The silver-haired girl was wearing short blue training shorts, a black t-shirt on top that fit easily around her bust, and black gloves and shoes. Valerie was delivering a combination of punches and kicks to a punching bag hanging from the ceiling. A blow, another blow, a somersault with a kick, and finally, another somersault followed by a blow with his open palm, a blow that ended up destroying the poor punching bag, and what was inside fell to the ground. Valerie sighed at that, it was already the sixth time he broke down. But anyway, Valerie made a magic circle appear under the destroyed punching bag, and it was wrapped by said circle, so that within seconds, it looked like new Valerie would approach some stands where he grabbed a small towel with which he wiped off the sweat, and then he took a bottle of water and drank it. Valerie then began to think about everything that happened these two weeks, where his only and most important priority is to help Issei with her mental state, but he knows that it has had little result. And he could see it on the days that Issei seemed more depressed than usual, there was even one day when he didn't leave his room all day, not even to eat or anything else, and when he wanted to go see him, Issei just told him. He said not to go in and leave him, which worried Valerie even more, as did Kuroka and Lafay. They feared that his mental state had worsened even more, and did not realize it. Valerie even feared that Issei would never be the same as before, or that he would never even recover from his serious mental state. All that he even wondered. How serious could what those Gremory did to him have been? No. Valerie started to think better and had to look for clues to come up with an answer. He began to think about how little he knew about Issei before he entered the supernatural world. He only knows based on reports found by Azazel that Issei was a simple high school student and the biggest pervert and loser in his school, then the fact that he was killed by some fallen angels who were in Kuo at that time, and that later Ria's Gremory in his agony revived him as one of his own. Typical of a demon, taking advantage of someone with a very powerful sacred gear dying in agony and then reviving him as a demon against his will, how disgusting. 
at least that's what Valerie thinks, who although she is also a part demon and the descendant of Lucifer, she dislikes the way of thinking of the demons, she is undoubtedly glad to have ended up in the hands of Grigori and not in those of the current one. Demonic Council, who surely would not let her have her freedom for having Lucifer's blood. Ah, Valerie shook his head to get that out, it wasn't time to think about that, he had to find an answer to Issei's trauma weight. Drama. Valerie said to herself, a little surprised at having reached that conclusion. Dot, but if that's the case what is it like this? Valerie began to think in more detail about her small conclusion. There was no doubt that what is happening to Issei is that he has a trauma. A depression like the one he has could not be caused by something like knowing that all this time, your friends and loved ones only used you for his benefit, there was something more, and there is no doubt about that. Valerie started thinking even more about a response, gosh, she had never made her brain work double time to think of a response to a trauma leaving that aside. Valerie thought a little and remembered that she had heard certain rumors that the Sekiruite Haidu Issei apparently had feelings for Rhea's Gremory. Since she intervened in the engagement party she had with the current Phoenix heir, Razor Phoenix, whom she defeated in a fight with an incomplete balance breaker that only lasted 10 seconds, for the freedom of the Gremory heiress. Thinking about that made Valerie raise an eyebrow in annoyance and unconsciously release some of her aura as she squeezed the water bottle in her hands tightly and squeezed it as the water spilled out. Valerie, realizing what he did and what the reason for his anger was, blushed with shame and. Ah, I'm an idiot, Valerie yelled at herself grabbing her hair, she just behaved like a jealous girl who doesn't like to see another girl with her love interest wait a minute, loving oh, I'm a brute, 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 Valerie shouted to herself again as she shook her head from side to side. Hey. Is that you, Valerie? Hearing that familiar voice, Valerie turned around and saw that it was Issei who was at the entrance to the training room, looking at Valerie a little surprised. Oh, he hello Issei, did you sleep well? Said Valerie, a little nervous to see him in the place. Damn, since when did she become a little shy when talking to him? Issei. Valerie asked, a little surprised to see how the brunette looked at her, as if she were a little dazed. Issei blushed when he saw Valerie in that training suit, she admits it, Valerie is a beauty without a doubt. That short short that gave a good view of her beautiful legs, the flannel that fit her with a not so revealing neckline. However, something would click in Issei's mind, and he would realize that he was gawking at Valerie, it seems that even with his current state, feminine beauty will never be foreign to him. Issei would shake his head several times, to get rid of his blush, and speak with a nervous laugh, be good morning Valerie, and yes, at least today I was able to sleep a little better than before. I see I'm glad said Valerie with a small smile, and I noticed that it was true, unlike the other days where Issei looked sleepy, this time he was a little better in terms of having slept for a while. Little better than before what are you doing here so early? I was going to ask you the same thing, but simple, I came to warm up a little to reduce stress, Issei said approaching while she stretches with her arms. I understand. In that case, how about we train together this time? Valerie proposed with a small smile. Hey? Really? Issei asked more than surprised by his sudden offer. Well, of course or are you afraid? Valerie said a little mockingly and Issei rolled his eyes to the side, bad joke. Okay I guess that's worth it Issei said accepting the offer. Well, let's measure our skills with a small friendly duel, Valerie said smiling and the wings of divine dividing spread from his back. For me there is no problem Issei said smiling with a little confidence and raises his left arm, in which the boosted gear materializes. And then, both the glove and the wings start to glow and. Bulge dragon balance breaker. Banishing dragon balance breaker. As those words echoed, both young men were flashed by a red and white light respectively, and when it dissipated, Issei and Valerie were in their scale mail armor. Underworld. In Castle Lucifer, in the large meeting room, the current leaders of the alliance were at a large table talking about a topic. And that topic was, Issei. Was there any luck? Even a hint? Serzichas asked the other leaders. Nothing yet, the different fallen angels led by Akeno have had no luck searching every corner of the underworld, as Izzel said with crossed arms. I sent groups of angels and the Joker to search the outskirts of Japan, as well as contacting angels in other countries just in case, as well as the different churches. But still, nothing yet said Michael who was now not smiling as usual, but he was stern. I have even sent groups of Valkyries and great trackers to search the Nordic countries, but nothing at the moment old Odin said, rubbing his beard. Even to this day, many Yaukes who are good trackers have been all over Kyoto and the Yaukai world, but nothing so far Yasaka said a little seriously about this whole matter. Ash Serzicha said rubbing his temple. Dot, it's been two weeks since then, and we haven't found anything, not even a clue to his whereabouts. Even so, we will not stop a search for anything in the world, Serzich's Azazel said a little seriously. Dot since last week, the rumor of Issei's disappearance has spread throughout the underworld and even heaven, as well as the Yaokai world and the Nordics. And I don't doubt that the Cow's Brigade must have already learned what happened, since the few attacks that occurred are proof of it. 
Azazel knew that during all the time they were looking for Issei so as not to cause suspicion or worry anyone from the different factions, there were few attacks from the Cow's Brigade, who found out what happened and took advantage of it, but still the talented young people they took care of them. But even today, nothing is resolved. Serzich's, I'm a little intrigued, but do you at least know what happened when Haidu Issei suddenly disappeared? Asked Serzich's best friend, Ajuka Beelzebub with his typical serious face. It's true, Serzich's Chan, because it's too strange that Sekiruite Chan suddenly disappeared like that without being seen one last time, said Seraph Leviathan was also serious about this whole matter, at least in this kind of moment it's not so childish. Buak, I'm tired of all this, I would like to sleep a little Falbia Masmadia said yawning, and the other leaders just sighed at his lazy attitude. Serzich's put that aside and began to think about the questions that his mask companions asked of him. He remembers well that when they started talking about the topic of Issei's disappearance, he had not said the reasons of how it was possible even though he knew it, he just did not tell what caused Issei to be alone and suddenly disappear. The others only knew that he disappeared suddenly, and when they found him in a certain place in Kuo, they only found the evil pieces of him and the possibility that he is still alive, but that he was kidnapped by someone. Serzich's sighed and decided that it was better to tell them the rest, it was not good to keep secrets, maybe this way they would get an answer to all this, no matter how low it may be. Well, the truth is if there is something I didn't tell you when Issei Kun disappeared Serzich's said. And what would it be Serzich's? Azazel asked intrigued and with his hands on his chin. You see, the rest that Kiba Kun told me about what happened was the following Serzich's said on that same day, before Issei Kun disappeared, my little sister and her clan were in their club preparing for the his school's festival and the raiding game against Sererg. At that same moment, Lady Phoenix contacted them and made Issei Kun promise to protect Ravel. After that, Ria's was going to leave the place when Issei Kun asked her if something was wrong, then Ria Tan asked Issei Kun about his feelings towards her, and he responded in a way that made her angry. When they returned to his house after all that, Ria Tan and the others confronted Issei Kun about his feelings towards them, to which he responded in a way that they didn't like, making them lash out at him, which confused him, since he didn't see that did something wrong. And then, Ria's muttered something that made Issei Kun leave the place, and after that he disappeared out of nowhere, only to find his evil pieces in an abandoned place in Kuo. After hearing Serzich's words, all the leaders were a little surprised that all this happened because of something like that. But someone decided to speak up and clear everyone's doubts. And what exactly did Ria say to say? Azazel asked curiously as he raised an eyebrow. Aden had an analytical look while rubbing his beard, Yasaka was still a little serious listening to everything and hoping that whatever she heard was nothing bad, and Serafal and Ajuka were just waiting for Serzich's to speak, they felt that what they were going to hear could be bad. Serzich's sighed and put his hands together on the table, and then spoke Ria said that he wished he had never reincarnated Issei Kun into his servant. His response made all the leaders without exception widen their eyes almost in shock as they looked at Serzich's in disbelief after what he said. Why did she say that, not that she loved to say? Azazel asked in amazement, almost not believing what she heard. Riaz was angry and fed up with Issei Kun, not understanding her feelings, and even thought that Issei Kun didn't care which made her lash out at him, saying that without thinking Serzich's said, making eyes of pity, since he knows that Riaz hasn't been the same since that day. This I didn't even expect Michael said with his stern face. Wow, the relationships of young people today are complicated, Aten said rubbing his eye patch. What matters now is to find Issei Kun and hope they fix his problems, that's all we can do Serzich's said. Tell me Serzich's what happened to the raiding games that were supposed to happen. Azazel asked. They have been cancelled until further notice. This was decided since everyone found out about Issei Kun's disappearance. Even Sarah Erg and his group are cooperating in the search Serzich's said. Another thing, Serzich's, what were you able to find out by interrogating the various prisoners from Cow's Brig? Do you know anything about Issei's disappearance? Azazel asked, changing the subject. No. None of them know anything, they only found out about Issei Kun's disappearance, thanks to some contacts in our ranks, and decided to take advantage of it Serzich's said. Wow, how problematic. More traitors among our people, it is clear that those traitors hate us, Aten said rubbing his beard. Let's just hope that nothing bad happens in the meantime said Michael who had a bad feeling, he feels that something big could come now that the cow's brigade knows about the disappearance of the Seker Yute. Returned to Valerie's team base. In the training room, there were faint traces of destruction that were caused by the fight between Issei and Valerie, where both young men were sitting on the stands and sighing tiredly while wiping their sweat with small towels and drinking water. Dot dot. I admit it, you have improved too much said Valerie smiling. And you're still the same, or even a little stronger than the first time we fraught Issei said sighing and scratching his cheek. Valerie didn't say anything, but he had to agree with her. Still, Valerie frowned as she became a little thoughtful. 
he had noticed that during the practice fight, there were few moments where when Issei was going to land an attack on him, he would instantly retract as if he had seen something, and that almost made him lose, but he still never gave up until they agreed that it was enough. Issei for his part also became thoughtful and remembered the practice fight they had recently. He swore that instead of Valerie in the place, at times he was replaced by the appearance of Raynor who looked at him with mockery, which made him pale and contract. Issei swore that just by remembering her, Raynor was like the devil himself. Kind of ridiculous, since she's a fall who's worse than a demon. Issei shook his head a little as he tried to forget about it, and without knowing it, her eyes had a scared look, and she was sweating a little cold. Something that was noticed by Valerie and he was a little surprised, that expression represents pure fear of something or someone. Could it be? Be well, I'm going to my room I won't go out for a few hours, Issei said turning around to leave, but when he had barely taken two steps. Issei I called him Valerie, and the brunette turned to see the girl who, to her surprise, had a somewhat sad face. But why? What's happening to you so suddenly, Issei? Be what are you talking about? Issei asked doubtfully and swallowing the lump in his throat. Don't act like you don't know said Valerie, I know that something is happening to you, since these last two weeks you've been strange and even bad, please, tell me, what's really wrong with you? And I Issei was trying to say and then lowered his head I don't want to talk about that. I understand that your new alignment worries you and what may happen next, but said Valerie now becoming severe that way of behaving, you are not yourself why? Why are you like this? I don't even believe that you are only like this because of your old colleagues, there has to be something else, or am I wrong? Valerie had decided to be more direct in what she was saying without leaving room to give Issei more questions, only answers. She knew that if she spoke too seriously, Issei would probably feel bad for having to remember what happened, but if she didn't do that, she would never have an answer to her problem, and her condition would decline even more over time. Issei for her part was surprised that, once again, Valerie had read her expression as if nothing had happened to come to that conclusion. But Issei with serious eyes lowered his head, and these were covered by her hair, he felt that great sadness and anger could arise at any moment, he felt that he wanted to let go of her to vent, but he didn't want to do it, he doesn't want to seem so vulnerable and. Partner Drake spoke to her in her thoughts I understand how you feel, but continuing to keep it to yourself will not help you at all, and will only make your condition even worse. Besides, she is trying to help you, so, vent, don't hold it in anymore and let it out. Issei was shocked by what Drake said, and then she felt her heart beating hard, but this beat reminded her of a very horrible pain, and she clutched her chest in the area of her heart. Issei Valerie called him again, and her brunette walked over to see her with her somewhat pale expression, which worried Valerie, but she decided to speak, don't you believe me that I really want to help you Issei. Since the last few days I have been worried about the way you behave, you are sleepy, you eat very late or you don't eat at all, you spend your time locked up. What makes you like this? And I I say said while she took deep breath several times wanting to control the painful beating of her heart that reminded him, who is the source of her pain, and those who increased it then. Would you die for me? The memory, face and words of Raynor came to her mind, she felt that she was in front of him. I don't want that dirty low-class demon to talk to me, Issei always wondered if it was okay for her to talk to all the girls in the group about her, because they were beautiful girls. Ha ha ha. Yes you're right. It was an appointment for kings. Because of her I was very bored. When Issei went shopping with the girls, she always wondered if they felt bored being with him. I don't want a rotten brat like you to call me by my name. Issei has always wanted to call Rias by her name for a long time, but she was afraid that she would say the same things that the fallen angel told her. Issei Kun, please save me this demon is trying to kill me I love you, I love you a lot therefore, let's defeat these demons together. Issei remembered the trainer, her first girlfriend, burned him for her life, and the woman she loved, Rias, killed her, she knew that back then, it was best for Raynor to die. She killed both him and Asia, so it was for the best that she died, but even after all that. But why is it like this? Issei asked himself who could no longer resist it, she felt that. Hardner, let him out. Don't repress it anymore, let off steam, so you'll take a weight off your shoulders, Drag advised his partner, since he knew how he felt. Issei upon hearing those words felt something break in his heart and then, with a couple of tears falling from his eyes, he fell to his knees to the ground. Issei Valerie shouted worriedly when she saw how the brunette collapsed to the ground like that. She quickly knelt close to him and took her face in her hands to see him. Could it be that she put too much pressure on him, or? Seeing that Issei had his face full of her tears squeezed her heart. Issei what's wrong with you? Whatever it is, I want to help you, but I won't be able to unless you tell me what's going on. Issei, even in her state, heard from her what Valerie told him, she did not want to reveal something so pathetic to him, she was afraid that he would make fun of her worse, but. Issei, please believe me said Valerie in a serious tone. It even seemed like her eyes became shiny. I really want to help you, but I need you to tell me what's wrong Issei or do you think I don't care how you feel? 
Issei, hearing her words, didn't know what to say, but she still kept crying, she couldn't even think of an answer, but. Trust her, partner Drake spoke to her in her thoughts, she really wants to help you, if not. So why do you think she took the trouble to listen to you that night and make you that offer? Issei, upon hearing the words of her dragon companion, stopped sobbing a little, but she had to agree with him. Since he joined her, Valerie always looked out for him, made sure he didn't lack for anything, and even tried to cheer him up. And now she's here, trying to help him with her problem, and he won't let her. Valerie on her part, seeing that Issei was still silent and sobbing even after almost a minute of asking him that question, felt that he also wanted to cry, seeing this Issei so broken squeezed her heart. She was about to want to leave, when. I'm afraid Issei finally decided to speak the truth is that I'm afraid of mixing with girls, because it makes me think that the same thing will happen again, the girls in my old group were good with me, but I thought that if I tried to get closer to them, I was afraid that they would reject me and laugh at me. I even thought that they could repair my heart that was destroyed by her, something that was rebuilt a little, but at the same time in the end they destroyed even more, only leaving fragments or nothing Issei sobbed even more I'm afraid I don't think I can ever get acquainted with any girl. Issei said Valerie staring at the brunette and he did the same without stopping his sobbing, which brought a couple of tears to Valerie, who was resisting his emotions as best he could tell me, please who or what makes you feel this way. His question made Issei tremble a little, which Valerie noticed. Dot. I know that talking more about it will hurt you, but this way I can understand it to help you. So please tell me everything. Issei sobbed once more before trying to wipe his tear-filled face, it seemed difficult, but he managed something. D it all started before I became a demon, and so, Issei went on to tell Valerie everything that happened back then he is a fallen angel named Rainer, who posed as a human by the name of Yuumelmano, asked him to be her boyfriend, how at the end of their date she killed him at sunset, how Rhea saved him. Also that he confronted her and the knowledge of her intentions seriously hurt him deep down without knowing it until now, how he killed Asia for her sacred gear and confronted her until he could defeat her, and that Rhea's ended her life. When Valerie heard the entire story of what happened, he was undoubtedly surprised, he did not expect that the origin of his trauma would be that full name drainer. Although hearing how she played with Issei's feelings and killed him, in addition to the fact that those grimmeries never cared about Issei as they should where they only thought about them and believed that Issei was the one who was wrong, made her feel great hatred. Towards all of them. All I wanted was for someone to love me for who I am, Issei said with a broken voice, as more tears fell down her cheeks. When Rainer asked me to be her boyfriend, it was the happiest day of my life, but it was all a lie he said to himself clenching his fists. I know how I am, but I don't hurt anyone I didn't want any of this Issei said a little harder. I never asked to become a demon, I never asked to put my life in danger, I just wanted a person who loved me for who I am, to live peacefully with that person, to have a future and a family. Was all that too much to ask for? Issei said almost shouting as he looked at Valerie with a face of rage full of tears, why damn did it have to be me of all people? Why wasn't it someone else who had to risk his life for people who don't properly value the sacrifice I make Issei shouted angrily. Seeing him like this, Valerie quickly gave Issei a hug, putting her head on his shoulder so that he could cry and vent. Issei cried without further ado, bringing out all the sadness that had been contained for a long time and that was heard only in the place where they were. Valerie for this time allowed herself to cry a little together with Issei, seeing him broken like this and knowing the reasons why this was like this made his heart hurt. After several minutes, Issei had already stopped crying and brought out everything he had inside of him. He truly felt that a weight was largely lifted off his shoulders. Well Valerie just wipes a couple of tears from his eyes. No one said anything, Valerie continued hugging Issei waiting for him to finish venting although he stopped crying, while Issei with his slightly watery eyes looked at Valerie, he was happy that she supported him and helped him get everything out. That. Thank you Issei said, breaking the silence and separating himself a little from Valerie, then staring at her. Thanks for everything, Valerie. I really needed to get that out. She said with a look of gratitude, to which Valerie smiled and wiped away a tear that he wanted to come out. Also thanks to you, Drake, for always being with me and truly, forgive me for having such a pathetic bear. She said sincerely. Heh, you don't have to worry mate, although you are a unique and even rare case, I'm glad it is like that, that way I think this will be more fun, Drake said, well he made a say laugh, thanks Drake. And the truth is, I'm sorry for all the problems it causes you. I'm sorry that your name that was once feared and respected by everyone has become something funny and a mockery, Issei said with some guilt in her voice. Heh, don't worry partner. Although the op-eyed dragon thing left me a scar, I admit that times change, and maybe you were already admired before receiving that name Drake said, sounding a little depressed for a moment when he remembered that ridiculous name. Heh, I know, Drake. That's why I want you to know that you are my friend, the best of all, and I will do everything possible so that the name of the Sekar Uita regains its former glory, being feared and respected, but at the same time admired and without fear of others, he said Issei with a smile. 
Ha, ah, you don't know how happy it makes me to hear that, partner Drake said with a tone as if he wanted to cry, but relieved. Valerie, for his part, smiled when he saw the interaction between those two, it was obvious that they treated each other like friends. Valerie had to admit that Issei has a better connection and compatibility with her dragon than she does with his. And something told him that he should talk to Albion. Issei said Valerie and the brunette stopped by to see her. I will understand if you are not fully recovered yet, but keep this in mind, if you need to talk to someone, come with me and I will help you in any way I can, no matter the time, place or time. I will be there to be your emotional support, never doubt that. Thank you, Valerie, I really appreciate it, Issei said smiling gratefully and a good shine returned to her eyes. Valerie blushed at her smile and became a little happy seeing that the shine returned to Issei's eyes, it means that he has made a good progress, even though it was very painful for Issei. Valerie said is he here? Both young men heard the sweet voice of a young woman they knew, where instantly, the one who appeared at the entrance to the training room was Lefei, who was wearing simple clothes and carrying a tray with plates of food. Lefei entering the training room and seeing both Issei and Valerie sitting on their knees on the floor, somewhat close to each other, made her freeze when she saw them. And unintentionally, many possibilities came to her mind when she saw both young men so close, and she blushed with embarrassment. The Edo L I'm sorry for interrupting you said Lefei, who quickly left the tray on a small table in the place, and without saying more she hurriedly left the place. Issei and Valerie were momentarily confused by Lefei's reaction and stared at each other again, where they both noticed how close they were and what they were wearing. Valerie wore her training suit which for her brown color makes her look hexy, while Lissé wore shorts and a t-shirt that fit her body and gave a small glimpse of her exercise body. Both young people, realizing how they were and what Lefei thought, quickly burst into blushes. I'm sorry I think I'll go back to my room Issé said upset, getting up quickly and going towards the gym exit, leaving behind a Valerie who took a while to react. However, Issé stopped her advance and turned to look at Valerie again gee thank you again, Valerie. But that said, Issei left her place, leaving Valerie who, even with a blush on her face, put his hand to her heart, and it beat in a way that she didn't understand, it's as if she was happy. Dot dot. It was already night on that same day. Valerie Lucifer was in her room trying to sleep, and boy did he try. Because no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't fall asleep the reason. Not even she knows. Valerie sighed when he saw that it would take her a while to fall asleep, and he looked at the clock on his nightstand, seeing that it was 10.30 pm. She's been like this for two hours. Albion are you awake? Valerie called to his dragon companion, hoping that he was at least awake this time. Half a minute passed in which she had no response, she was ready to give up when suddenly. What's wrong, Valerie? Asked a vanishing dragon who let out a yawn while he asked that, a sign that he was sleeping until recently. I'm sorry to interrupt your nap, but I need your opinion said Valerie. And what would it be? Asked Albion. About what happened today, and everything that Haidu Issei had to go through. What do you think about that? Valerie said to his dragon partner who took half a minute to respond. If I give you my opinion, I would say that I did not expect the emotional state of the drag bearer to decline in that way, due to something like unrequited love and a fear caused by that woman who traumatized him, Albion said with compression Valerie, always remember what I told you. The bearers of the two celestial dragons never had a peaceful life, although there was an exception with very few, they always had internal problems that led them to madness. I know Valerie said feeling nostalgic, where his past came to his mind and in his head the image of a very beautiful black-haired woman who smiled at him appeared. Valerie shook his head to get that image out of his mind and speak even so, I think it wasn't fair what he suffered. He just wanted someone to love him, he wanted to be with that someone with whom he will share his entire life until his last days, and this is what the world gave him. Horrible. The wielders of the two heavenly dragons were always considered a threat to the factions, where they only had two options for them, Albion said nostalgically, as if remembering the past with his former wielders, either they recruit them and they serve them forever, or they eliminate them further for fear that their fight will destroy much of the world itself. Even if that Bible god purposely made both sacred gears where Drag and I are sealed weak, they still have enough power to destroy much of the world, or even the entire world, with just our fighting and destructive force. Still, I wish that would change he didn't say that I want the rivalry between us to end, I still want to face a say to show who is stronger. But said Valerie with somewhat sad eyes haven't you thought that it would be good to change? Why keep killing each other if you know you'll just end up with someone else later? Wouldn't a friendly rivalry without deaths included be better? Maybe. Although, I admit that since I've been with you, I've changed too much. And Drake, although he retains his pride as a dragon, it shows that he enjoys his current life with Haidu Issei, just as I enjoy this life with you, Valerie Albion's words made Valerie smile gratefully. Thanks Albion, hmm. If we talk about changing the custom of the two heavenly dragons, that change would not be bad. Although it would be a different story, if it is that for the first time in all of history, the bearers of the two celestial dragons end up as a couple. 
Ha 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 Albion laughed funny. Valerie, for his part, blushed almost to the extreme when he heard the mockery of his partner see shut up, idiot, don't misunderstand I don't even like a say, I just don't want to see him like this and not let it affect our future fight. Oh, is the old Valerie Lucifer who loves only fights coming back again. And here I thought you had finally matured and grown in personality Albion mocked again. Shut up, that's not true Valerie shouted, putting his pillow on his face to muffle his screams, which lasted half a minute, and he removed the pillow from his face. I hate you. Ha 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 ha. I love you too Valerie Albion said with amusement. Valerie sighed and decided to look at the ceiling for a few seconds until something clicked in his head. Oh, it's true. Tell me Albion, are they okay? Oh I see. And answering you, yes. They are fine, although they are waiting for you to visit them again, especially her Albion said the last thing with apparent fear. Valerie sighed, she already expected that, but it was time well then Valerie closed while she continued lying down and clasped her hands. After a few seconds, Valerie opened his eyes and saw himself in another place that was not a room, but a white space. And in front of her, there were some stands in which there were many people with hoods, all with their heads lowered and a somber expression. Valerie sighed when she saw them. I see the things don't change with them. Ara, Valerie Chan. It's good that you came to see us the girl, upon hearing that female voice, turned around and saw that whoever was approaching her was a very beautiful woman with long black hair and red eyes and black clothes. It's good to see that you are well as always, Helena Sand said Valerie with a small smile by the way, where is she? Here I am, Valerie when the girl heard that male voice, she saw that the person approaching the place was a tall, handsome man with white hair it's good to see you as good as always. I say the same about you, Lux said Valerie smiling. Lux is known for being the strongest male wielder of Hacker Yuku and being the only one along with Helena not to succumb to the juggernaut drive craze, Helena was even the strongest female wielder of divine dividing before Valerie. Dot. I see that a lot of things have happened out there, especially with the current wielder of the Sekiryute Lux said sternly, but smiling slightly. It's obvious that you guys aren't missing anything Valerie smiled sarcastically, knowing that they, perhaps, saw everything that happened still, it's true. And I'm a little worried that his condition will decline again. Oh wow. The great Valerie Lucifer who said that she was going to crush her rival like an insect. Is she worried about him? Helena said mockingly and Valerie blushes with shame. That's not what you think, Helena San he replied with apparent anger, although the blush didn't help much. Yes, yes, good. Continuing with this luck said, high-fiving if you want advice on what to do Valerie, I will only tell you to support him at all times as you told him, no matter the moment. Also, Valerie. You should know that that boy's emotions are very destroyed, he had never seen a case like that, not even when he was alive, Helena said seriously. I know, but I fear the worst I don't know what could happen if his condition declines even more than it already was, Valerie said with sad eyes and crossed his arms, I fear that he will commit something. Craziness. Like trying to commit suicide, right? Helena's words made Valerie look at her with surprise and horror Valerie, you should already know that there are cases that can cause people to do the stupid act of committing suicide, the best examples are bullying, depression and love. Where in my opinion, love is the most fragile. And no Valerie said, putting her hand on his chest could it be that. In these last days. Was a say thinking about committing suicide. Said Valerie with horror that the brunette had thought that way at some point. We won't know that, Valerie. But Luck said with understanding. I can see it, I don't know how, but it's a very strange feeling. I only know that that boy, Haidu Issei, has brought hope to many and made other beings change. That's something unique but, there's no doubt about it. Valerie, you and Haidu Issei will become the new dragons who will bring a wave of changes to the entire world. Valerie was surprised to hear the words of the strongest male ancestor. Valerie, that boy deserves to be happy, Helena said with a pitiful smile. Dot, no one like him deserves to suffer, and like you, we envy him a little. Valerie was confused when hearing his words you see, not all the holders of the celestial dragons had a happy life or ending, they always lost everything or fell into madness for power. But that boy is capable of being the Sekir Yuite and continuing to preserve his life and his family, something envious for ancestors like us. I don't doubt one thing, that boy will make a great change to the world. And you have to be there for that to happen, Luck said smiling. Dot, we will only tell you this last thing, Valerie take care of him and make him see that his life is worth it and that many love and miss him, not because of the power with which he was born, although that helped him a lot, but his person. Valerie was surprised and didn't say anything about what his predecessors had said, only to put on a smile and nod in the end. Yes. I will protect and take care of him, there is no doubt about that. RR, you can see that my Valerie Chan is growing said Helena, wiping away some lonely tears with a handkerchief I want to see when your boyfriend will be. 
Valerie blushed to the extreme at those words and said I'm not interested in him, holy shit I anyway, I'm leaving, but that said, Valerie disappeared and left the interior of the divine dividing, leaving behind his predecessors who only smiled gracefully, the girl they are so proud of is already acting like a woman his age. The next day, you could see how Valerie was guiding Issei through a somewhat long hallway that led to a specific place. Um, Valerie where are we going exactly? Issei asked with doubt, since when Valerie went to look for him, he only told her to follow her. In addition to the fact that the brunette was wearing a trench coat with a hood, and Valerie told him not to take it off until they arrived. There is someone who wants to see you said Valerie continuing the walk. Furthermore, within seconds, they passed by a couple of people who there was no doubt belonged to the cow's brigade. These people didn't even bother to see Valerie and Issei hiding his face as best he could, luckily they didn't see him. And who would it be? Issei asked curiously, something told him that apart from Valerie and his team, someone else knew that he was with them. You'll see Valerie smiled at him, and something told Issei to prepare for whoever he sees. After a few seconds, they arrived at a door. One that really had nothing extra, no barriers, no magic nothing. If that door had had some kind of spell, Issei would not have doubted that there could be a dangerous being inside that they sealed like Gasper, but that was not the case this time. When opening said door, Valerie entered first and gestured for Issei to enter without fear. And so he did he never expected that upon entering said room, he would see a girl wearing gothic lolita clothes just sitting there doing nothing, staring at nothing. Normally he would say that she is just a girl, but it wasn't like that. Issei swore he had seen this girl somewhere, plus her instincts told her that she was more than that simple appearance that she shows. Office Dreg's words made Issei extremely surprised and didn't know what to say. Office went to see Issei and did nothing, her gaze did not change, not even the expression on her face, and that was strange. It was as if he had no emotions Issei just remained static in his place, and Office happened to look at him, specifically, at his left arm. It's been a while, Drake said Office who then went to see Issei who still couldn't get over her astonishment when he saw her from the front, she smiled in her own way, and then it's nice to meet you. Dot Seker Yuite. Even with those words, Issei remained static in his place. He knew that she was the being that represents the infinite, who surpasses all beings in this world except one. The Ouroboros dragon, the god dragon, office was in front of him and without him or even Valerie knowing. She was an important part for the celestial dragons to reach a new level, although no one could intuit that she was like that. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.